Good afternoon. So you're going to have to excuse me on, on two points today, that I'm presenting on behalf of Clotilde, who you have in your program, uh, who could not be here with us today. And secondly, I am not going to wrap my presentation to you. <laughs> what I am going to do, however, is present MSF eCare, which is an electronic algorithm to improve the management of childhood illnesses in primary healthcare settings of MSF. So what I'd like to first do is just uh, describe the, the algorithm and then take you through to the feasibility study. So I think this comes, we decided to work in this coming from a context where we found that uh, in most of the contexts where we work, there are clinical guidelines <laughs> available on the field, but often these guidelines do not guide the, the clinicians in a step-by-step -step process. They're often limited to severe disease and um, they are quite uh, ambiguous for the less trained health workers. So we said these are the problems we're trying to address with MSF EK. So we wanted to create a clinical pathway that would be very unambiguous, a step-by-step -step procedure in order to help the clinician to assess, classify, and treat the patient. Uh, children two months to five years with acute illness presenting in the primary health care centers. And we wanted to have this based on available evidence and expert design guidelines. So we did a systematic review of the published international guidelines using both MSF material but WHO guidelines and national guidelines to uh, develop the algorithm to be uh, to include the diseases that we would uh, find in most of our contexts and to have the best practices for the context in where we work. Uh, these. Uh, this uh, was then formalized into the clinical algorithm, and this was validated through a peer review process. Our main goal was to improve the quality of care and the rational use of antibiotics through this tool. So I'm just going to take you through very quickly the, the guideline, uh, the, the algorithm as it exists. So it's a paper algorithm, this one. And it's based on a syndromic assessment. So it's based when the patient comes in. If the patient is presenting with a cough, it takes you through the cough. It takes you through the assessment of uh, diarrhea, uh, through ear problems, and so forth, uh, skin, et cetera. And then at the end, it takes you uh, to the fever. And if we are in a malaria risk area, then uh, the malaria rapid test is, is proposed. Um, if you don't find a cause of fever, then uh, a um, urinary tract infection is proposed for children under two. If we still don't have an end of a cause of fever, the classification comes to likely viral infection. This reminds the user that if there have been no worrying signs, et cetera, that the child will probably have a self-limiting disease, and therefore they can safely say, in this case, do not need to prescribe antibiotics. However, to inform the mother if the <laughs> fever persists, that she should bring the child back to the health center. So this was the formalization of the, the algorithm on paper, and we then uh, transformed this algorithm into an Android application. Uh, this application needed to be something that would help the, drive the clinicians through the, the assessment process. So it needed to uh, be very uh, uh, prescriptive in doing this. Of course, we wanted to increase adherence to guidance that exists and to limit interpretation. It had to be, the application had to move away from the very linear structure of the paper algorithm to a non-linear structure because it had to guide the clinician through the consultation process. And we had to ensure that the, the consultation, the assessment of the child would not be disrupted by the, the algorithm, uh, by the, the tool. So we, we want, did not want to disrupt the consultation process. The other important point was that the, the application had to be very flexible. It had to be able to be adapted to the context we're facing, to the local epidemiological context, and to the material available uh, in these contexts on the field. So what we did was we added another menu into the application where the clinician, the, the user, could um, see what material was available to him in, in, in their particular field. So in some fields, uh, you know, that people have oximeters, so they could add that in, or and to the drugs available in their health centers. And this could then be programmed into the application, and the application would be modified and adapted to that context. 
So now I'd like, I'd like to just explain to you a bit about the feasibility study that we conducted. So we, before, obviously, we needed to assess the acceptability and implementation of, of MSF eCare. And uh, we did a limited effic efficacy testing on antibiotic pres prescription. So for the outcomes, we wanted to look at acceptability. And with this, we want to look at user satisfaction and appropriateness. We want to look at the implementation, so field factors that would either facilitate or hamper the implementation. And the limited efficacy testing, we wanted to look at the antibiotic prescription rate before and after the introduction of MSF eCare. So we did a quasi-experimental pre-post study. Uh, we did this in the Democratic Republic of Congo in the eastern province in Getty where we were in three MSF-supported health centers. We enrolled six consulting nurses, and in the Democratic Republic of Congo, nurses are able to prescribe. And the, the, the study population was children coming, presenting with acute illness two to 59 months. The intervention was a one-day training, uh, and then a one-day on-job supervision with the application. And MSF eCare was used over a seven-day period in April 2015. So when we looked at the acceptability and implementation, we did the qualitative data through direct observation and in-depth interviews, and the quantitative data through the uh, consultation process from MSF eCare. I'd like to just specify here that it is not just a decisional support system, the, the tool, the application, but it also is a data collection tool. So it records what the clinician, so it records the, as the consultation process goes on, what the, the diagnosis is, what the treatment is, but it also allows the clinician at the end to write their own diagnosis and treatment with what they've come up with. For the limited efficacy testing, we did a comparison pre-test, so direct uh, observation of the consultation uh, process, and then we did the post-test uh, on the antibiotic prescription rates, looking at the data coming from uh, the, the application. Uh, all participants ha uh, enrolled in, in, in the study was uh, through informed uh, oral consent, and there was ethics oversight by the MSF medical director and according to the MSF ethical framework for innovation. So if we come to the results, <coughs> the acceptability. So users through the in-depth interviews reported um, that initially, even though the application was hard to use in the beginning, after a few days of use, it became very easy for them to use. Um, it allowed them to be a lot more, they reported to be a lot more systematic in their consultation, and it allowed them to access recommendations that were otherwise hard for them to, to find, and that it helped them to improve in the antibiotic prescription. They did say, however, that it increased the consultation, consultation time, and when we asked why, they said because they had to do a more thorough clinical examination of the child. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of acceptability, so the appropriateness, we found through that they reported that um, it covered the majority of the clinical situations that they encountered and that it uh, proposed a treatment that was uh, adapted to their context. From data coming out of the, the application, out of the tool, we saw that in 95% uh, of the, the symptoms uh, reported were addressed by MSF eCare. Symptoms that were not covered by the algorithm were eyes, mouth, and genital areas. In the diagnosis and treatment proposed, over 90% of the consultations uh, were addressed uh, with patients presenting with at least one symptom. And it was shown in terms of the adherence that uh, the nurses in 85% of the consultations followed the recommendation proposed by the application, whether to uh, prescribe or not an antibiotic. Looking at the efficacy testing, and it was quite limited, but in the pretest observation of uh, the prescriptions, we saw that in 46% of the patients' antibiotics were prescribed. And then when MSF eCare was introduced, 25% of the patients were prescribed antibiotics. So we can infer that there was a more or less 50% reduction in the prescription of antibiotics after the introduction of MSF eCare. So we can say that uh, feedback was that it was well accepted. 
that uh, clinicians uh, users found this to be a good job aid. It improved the thoroughness of the clinical assessment and uh, helped to re reduce antibiotic prescription. It was appropriate to the field realities we were facing, as it covered more than 90% uh, of the clinical situations, and the nurses adhered to 85% of the recommendation. It decreased the antibiotic prescription, and it was technical, technically feasible in Getty. We didn't encounter major technical problems, but what we did encounter was problems in data transmission. And following this, we realized that we would have to develop a peer-to-peer -peer offline data transmission uh, because we were in, in Getty, particularly, was, and in other contexts of MSF where we work, we're often in areas where there is no uh, connectivity. So um, if supervisors are going, we needed to uh, develop this uh, offline data transfer so that supervisors could go, collect the data, and then take it back to areas of connectivity to then push it up to a server. The future perspectives are that this will now be further piloted in a Central African Republic in Beberati. We would like to conduct a longer feasibility study with, for, uh, over a period of a year, and we would like to adapt the application for more remote settings. We also feel that this application can uh, help in further uh, research areas, such as in helping in eti etiological surveys and uh, be a platform for new diagnostic tools such as biomarkers and respiratory rate sensors. So I'd just like to thank uh, the people involved uh, the, uh, first for the development of the paper algorithm, the clinical algorithm, for the development of the software, and for all the, those that helped uh, put the feasibility study in place. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.